we have started. So, welcome to the second class. We are going, if you followed the first class and you, those who didn't come on the video, is communication is creation. And uh, today I want to start with this graphic that is here. In spirituality, we had already learned that somehow we are all connected and because we have one God, one Father in heaven and, and therefore we are all brothers and sisters and all. But uh, I, have, I, I make on YouTube and other uh, channels, I go and I study the latest scientific developments. And this is a scientific development not which uh, shows us the, the truth of what religion has been saying for 10,000 years. There is a machine called the electromagnet, electromagnetometer, which uh, counts the magnetic waves that come out from anyone. So they make you sleep there, and they, it's like a huge tube. I saw the picture and all, and it, they put it on the heart. And from there they, they, they gather the, the, the electromagnetic waves that are coming out from the heart, from the lungs, from the whole body. And this is the picture that they, they found, that these are the waves that is coming out from every human being. So right now, although I am here, the waves are now enveloping all of you. They say the, the, the highest frequency is about 12 to 15 feet. So right now, we are, we are really very much connected by the electromagnetic waves. And these waves, they don't stop. These waves then go on throughout the planet. So we are therefore influencing with our magnetic wave, because our magnetic waves are not, not something like, you know, like the light or something, uh, nothing inside. The magnetic wave contains messages from you. They contain your emotional aspirations. They contain the way your mind works. They contain uh, the energy that is going out from you. If it's a good energy through your, through your waves, you're automatically, whether you like it or not, you can't stop it. You can't stop it because you're so powerful that uh, you have you keep on sending waves, and as you send waves, so if I right now am sending a good wave, somehow it is influencing all of you, and you you are therefore getting a message from this body, sending out the waves, even if I don't know what the heck I'm sending out, but I'm sending out, and so. Therefore, we have to be very, 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 um, you know, careful in handling our power. We are powerful creatures that are constantly changing the life of this planet. Without knowing it, now that you know it, you will say, now I can take, uh, I, now that I know my life is in my hands, I am going to decide how I am going to change the planet. Just by sitting in my room and doing nothing. Just by sending, uh, being conscious of the electromagnetic waves that are going on. So this, these two people are there. See the heart is shown in the middle. So it is through the heart central part that these magnetic waves go there. It influences that one, that one influences another one, that one influences another one. And my reflection on that, and that is why these, uh, these three religions, uh, Christianity, Judaism and... Uh, and Muslims, in the religion, without them knowing it, they, they can't have a religion in which the community is not there. It's a communitarian religion. Hinduism, Buddhism is not a communitarian religion. I speak to God, God saves me, and I pay the price, nothing. I, it not a, I don't have to go Hindu temples, only they go one by one. They don't go as a group and sing and... and uh, respond and all that together. 
and that shows therefore the the effect that a praying community that a community of goodness that a community of love that a community that is joined what terrific vibrations must be going on from all the churches and gatherings of the muslims and gatherings of the of the jews and gathering of terrific vibrations are going and changing the world even though it is becoming bad but still it could have been much 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 worse if we were not constantly unconsciously sending out waves and changing the world wow so uh keep that in mind so that's why i searched for this image on, on the youtube uh, no on the internet and i found this image so i said let me show you and this is the real image that that is taken out by scientific people okay now now we start the lesson continuing from last time when i i brought to your to your notice that uh in a rough way everything that you do is communicating even if you don't accept the first that one that lesson that i showed you about the waves that go out the 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 cap that you are wearing is communicating to me something the way that you are sitting is communicating everything the the color of your hair is communicating the way you snore at night is communicating the way you walk everything there's nothing there's nothing in your whole being that is, even the way i hold this finger like this is communicating something so we are constantly uh, uh, uh constantly but unconsciously communicating now is it therefore that that this link that we have in which we we are communicating what does it do the communication that we that we have creates something new always so the very fact that we are we are communicating is not just you know shouting in the air we are communicating waves of who we are so if i'm i'm a person who's got hate in in my heart through that magnetic field i'm communicating hatred to the universe wow and then i begin to say i don't know why everybody hates me or why everybody why i i meet with this same same event every time i don't know what's wrong with everybody here something wrong with everybody here but now in this spirituality course it's time for you to say i am sending out these waves so they are coming back to me there is no other way and so you are creating something poisonous and so that poisonous first of all comes and bites you in the first place so get into into that mode of of knowing what you are doing so in this this the while while in a in a so this is a and another one here both are linked and here but we can't see it so in this way we are one because we are all holding hands with each other we are all one what makes us believe that we are not one is your body and mind i believe this is me so my body is a device that tells me i am separate but in truth our spirit which is our reality our electromagnetic fields and all the radio waves and everything that is going on for me is telling us this and throughout our lives we spent our lives believing that we are not one so we have uh sexual diversity so i am male you are female 
Then we have national. I'm Indian, you're, you're Irish. I'm, uh, I'm tall, you're short. I'm black, you're blue. I'm educated, you're not educated. You, you, so, and so all the thing that we, that we have to do in this, in this spiritual life is deny that your body is a tool for separation. As long as you give your body your, pro your prominent place, then you will always fight, you will always disagree because you have, you have decided that you are separate from her. So if you are separate from her, you will find what, what is the separation. Oh, she is female, she is young, I am old. So it goes on. So, and then we add to that separation and then, then we, we put on politeness. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Can you see? And that itself is a, takes so much energy because we are putting on an act. If you get into this mode of, of, of denying our body, whoever, uh, what did Jesus, Jesus tells us, he says, you have to deny the body and then you, who, you can come to me. So whoever denies himself and follows me, denies himself. So that's a great spiritual tool told to us 2,000 years ago to deny yourself because you, you think that yourself is the body. That's a great spiritual truth. Can we start doing that in your own life today that I am not what I see of myself. I am not that face in the mirror. I am not. I'm, maybe I am that but I am much, much, much more than that. I am much more than my, than my mind can imagine, that my heart can imagine, that anybody has told me. I have no clue who the heck I am. But I am I'm now more and more getting sure that this is not me. So what is the, what is the body? The body is a tool. The body is a device. The body is neither good nor bad, it just is. The body is neither right nor wrong, the body never sins and the body never has, the body has no virtue and it has no crime. So for, so what happens, so when you decide to, uh, when you decide to, to do, to do something you cannot do it, so you use your body and give her a punch. So what did I do? I used my body as a tool to declare my hatred for her. That is what you use. I can hate her and nothing happens. So, so my body becomes a tool to carry out my wishes. So treat your body as a tool. Nothing more, nothing less. So all our bodies are just tools. We are therefore uh, what do we do with the tools that we have? Take any tool that you have. You have a hammer, you have a, mm, an oven, you have a laundry, you have, you have a burner, you have a plier. You, what do you do with the tools? You use them at your command. You use them at your command. Can you therefore say, since my body is a tool, I will use it at my command. And what greater command can you give to your body than to use it as a tool of love? What command, greater command can you give it to your body than to use it as a, as a tool to be, to be used by God? And that is why the Catholic Church puts such, uh, such um, importance on the human body. What, what is the body? Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Wow! And yet it is a tool. What is your body? Your, your body is a, is a central force of everything that comes and goes through the senses. So on the one hand, while using it as a tool, love the tool, <coughs> love your body, 
love your body do no harm to it because you if you take care of the tool and keep it sharp or keep it uh, in a nice case and all when you want to use it you can use it but if you don't take care of the tool then when you want to use it you'll say oh my gosh it's become rusty now i didn't take care of it take care of your body so that it doesn't catch rust so that it can be used when the time comes for everything so that is the <coughs> whole thing of again of christian morality the body is the center of everything it is a tool but is a tool to be used by god okay we also have a prayer oh god what do you want me to do to whom do you to whom are you sending me and therefore even jesus says of myself i do nothing but i am the tool of the father who does all things through me so even jesus taught us that we are tools of god so uh, become a good tool today therefore to keep your to keep this tool sharp or to keep this tool in good condition in prime condition hi my father sorry for the tardy no no i know you you couldn't come but you made it yes so your body goes to sleep when it sleeps it has a thought just when it sleeps it has a thought believe it or not that when the body awakes it begins with the thought that it had just before going to sleep and so you get up as if nothing has happened yeah and you you just carry on that with a with a gap of of the night that came there so body sleep you have a thought body wakes up you have a thought if you want therefore to be used as a tool by god you have to declare to yourself an intention so as when you sleep you have a thought okay when you sleep and this is the importance of morning prayers and night prayers <laughs> so you have a thought so you get up in the morning you have a thought the so you can cancel this thought and put an intention for the day oh lord what would you have me do today oh lord god into your hands i commend my spirit oh god uh, i give you i give you permission to to work through me today i am going to give my body hands clothes and eyes, eyes everything so that you use them and i will not so when you have this thought early in the morning a first thought in the morning that you are going to spread the vibrations of of god's love that now percolates through through the day and when you go to sleep you now begin with another thought the thought is of gratitude thank you for being in me imagine if you can just say that line thank you for being in me the whole day and your your eyes in inner inner eyes begin to see how god worked in your life it may be for your ego it may be oh my god that was horrible it should not have happened this one oh my god i got news that my grand grandfather had cancer how can it be just last week last week his his wife died now this is the so you have to come and say that god does everything and i have no clue i am not going to fight with him i am not going to argue with him he did it and i am going to accept it because i am not going to bring bitterness into my life in order to make the planet better so when we are anxious we spread we spread anxiety when we are depressed 
we spread depression. When we are uh, traumatized, we spread traumatized. When we are happy and innocent as children, then we, we spread that. So, the world, if you, is not run so much by God because He has given us the power to run it. God has given us the power to run the world because He trusts us. So all we have to say is, Father, thank you for trusting me. And which is your world? This is going a little out of the topic, but which is your, your world? Believe it or not, and this is very, very, very important for all of us. If all of us could just do that, which is, the, which is the, your universe? Your universe is made up of your house in which you live, your children, your husband, your wife, your father, your mother, whoever is in that house. That is where you are, your, the, the throne. This is your, the center of your universe. And as it goes, I therefore make that universe a happy place. My gosh, so much of, of cruelty and noise and everything takes place in, that, in the universe in which God has put you. God has not put you in, in India or not put you in China or not put you there. He has put you in Croton and Hudson. Here in Palace Street or Church Street, He has put you there. That is your universe. And so you have a great obligation to make your universe as good as possible. And if your universe cannot be as good as possible, change the universe. Say, this is not this. Oh God, I cannot stand this one. I cannot do that one. My neighbors are making big noise. And maybe God is telling you, I don't want you here. I'll give you another place. And you'll find that as you search for another place, you get that place and everything becomes calm. So it is that because you asked God to, to change the universe in which you were in. You have the power to do that. So don't, don't worry about, oh my gosh, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Am I doing the this thing? Am I doing the that thing? So get into that, that the universe now. So after your, your family, and your, the, the, the house and home in which you live, it is your neighbors. They are part of your universe. It is your, your neighborhood. It is the place where you work. I tell, uh, I tell my students in the last class and all, uh, the place where you work is your cathedral. It is the most holiest place for you. And if you can't live there, give it up as soon as possible and go somewhere else rather than spread vibrations of gossiping, of condemning, of, of it's nauseous. So you have the power to live in the, and that is your universe. Your universe is not what Trump is doing. Your universe is not what King Jong Chung is doing there. Your universe is not the Democrats. Your universe is not the Republicans. Your universe is not Croton. Uh, uh, Croton, uh, well-being of Croton. Your universe is not that. Your universe is this. And if you can bring love and peace and joy to these 15 people or 20 people, that's the universe. That's all God wants you to do. And many of us, because we want to escape from these 15 people and we hate them, we want to take, okay, let me watch the TV. Very nice. Two hours, three hours, four hours watching the TV while everybody else is busy doing something and that's all. That's his universe, the universe outside the walls of his house. So any questions so far that I'm introducing you to your, your universe?
that is true about you, you have you have a mind and you have a mind. I want you to learn to make a distinction between the two minds. This mind is what we call the body mind. And what does this mind do most of the time? This mind is geared for you to survive. He'll tell you when to drink water, he'll tell you whom to avoid, he'll tell you when you're sick, he'll tell you what to that, he'll tell you which house to take, he'll tell you what kind of car to buy. And so this body, mind is only for survival. And because it is meant for survival, here comes again, I, if I won't need to survive, I must get rid of him. So hatred comes there. But it is needed for us for a certain time because the, the survival mind is always competing with others. He's stronger than me, he's weaker than me, she's more attractive than me, or she's less attractive than me. Am I appreciated? Am I loved? Do am I better than there is a Competition, this surviving mind is always competing. The moment you, you're walking on the street, you see another woman or man going at the side, you're at once judged and condemned or you're at once appraised that person, knowingly or unknowingly, but that is what we do because we are in the body. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm bringing it to your notice. So when you see yourself doing it, then tell yourself, I want to get out from the survival mode and get into another mode. What is spirituality? Spirituality is getting out from the survival mode and saying, trust in the Father. There's nothing to survive. He who created me will see that I, that I survive for another minute and another minute and another minute and another, another minute. If you can do that, then you will begin this mind, which is called the subconscious mind. Never thinks of survival. This mind is practically always at peace. This mind is spiritual. This mind is, is not confined to the body. This mind is spirit. Spirit. Wow, how big is your spirit? Your spirit, if you can draw a line, starts trillions of years ago, carries on for trillions of years ago, and carries on for trillions and trillions. Your spirit is, is, uh, can, is enveloping all the galaxies, all the known galaxies, there are 100 billion galaxies in, in the universe and your spirit is covering them all and more. Your spirit therefore has no, is not in space. Your spirit is out of space. And you, and so your spirit is going to live for a million, trillion years, suppose, because it is, it is going on forever. In this, here comes seventy-five to ninety-five years. That's your body, and that's what you think you are, and you have you have you have uh, you have uh, run away from the truth of that. This you have closed your eyes because you are so powerful. You have closed your eyes to the infinite glory of yourself in order to concentrate on this, this 60, 70, 80 years old. And in those 60, 70, 80 years old, you have traumas, you have depression, you have stress, you have, you have no peace, you have anger. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Whereas this is always at peace. 
this is always with God. Always. Even now it is with God. So the message that this, this mind gives and this mind should give, this is the message this mind gives. I, I, I must survive, I must compete, I must be appreciated, I must be, I must be loved, I must be, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. This mind says, the father and I are one. End of story. I spent quite a few years of my life when I started my spiritual life saying this, this saying thousands of times every day. The Father and I are one. The Father and I are one. And as it became like a portion of your life, then you begin to see how, how He runs your life and you don't have to do anything. So, and that is what your mind now broadcast to the world. That is what your mind, this mind, broadcast to your to your husband, to your wife, to your family, to everyone. That is what your mind broadcast to the neighborhood. That is what your mind broadcast to, to the community of the church where you belong or to the community of, of um, going for a picnic or going in a bus. You are always communicating. So you can choose therefore to communicate from this mind or to communicate from this mind. Both are you. One is one is a one is a stunted by space and time. This is eternal and infinite. What do you choose to be? You choose to be in space and time. So you'll have this space, only this space. You know? Five feet eight by two feet, three feet. That is the space. But if I choose to be here, this is infinite. So the choice is ours. What do you choose to be? Infinite. And it's not something that you are already infinite. You are already eternal. You are that. Except you have just thrown it away and said, this is real. And you have said, that is not real. Because... I can't see it. So, and that is why I brought this picture of communication where we are unseeingly, unseeingly beyond the senses influencing the life of everybody over here. So, any more questions on this? Father. Yes. Uh, somebody told me before that everyone is connected in some way and find that connection. That's why every time I go and somewhere See, when from the Philippines, and I live in California, and then I live in Tennessee, and then I live in New York. And I was thinking, what is the connection that I got with all these people? Because somebody that is stuck on my mind that we are connected somehow, or we're having mm -hmm. a connection to somebody. Yeah. And that's probably some, yeah. what you're saying. That it's, is the it's, truth. It's just coming into my mind yeah. right now, because it's kind of when you go somewhere and meet somebody, it's like saying, what is my connection to these people? Why, why are we all connected to What is somehow, the What is the connection? Way? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is the connection? I have uh, uh, in the some some previous classes I gave this example. Let me see. This is a spiritual example. So you have suppose suppose this is. Infinity. This is the shape of infinity. This is the size of infinity. Just for example's sake, this is not the truth. So, so if, if this is, and you are infinite. So let us take Corine. Corine is infinite. So Corine is infinite. So she is occupying the whole of infinity. Got that? So where the heck is, is him? And where the heck are all of us? If we are occupying the whole of infinity, where are we? 
think, give me the answer. We're inside also. Huh? We're in there also. You're in there also. Yeah. Go a next step further. If you are in there, whoa. whoa. Can you see that? Oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> now we are one because you are infinite. And you cannot therefore hog the whole of infinity and say, there's no place for you, go out there. But because we live in space and time, we tell each other, there's no place for you. I got my house, you got your car, you got this, I got my bank account, everything goes around. But here, we are infinite. And because we are infinite, we are one. Let's go one step further. If we are one with each other, God is infinite. Where does He fit into the picture? You're one with God. Mm -hmm. God. I and the Father are one. So the whole of the human race is one with each other and one with God. There is nothing outside us. Everything is inside us. Only because we are living in with our bodies, we think everything is outside us. Everything is inside us. Your mind that we are talking about, your heart that we are talking about is infinite. And it is eternal. So, therefore, we are in, in total communication. Why? We can't help because we are one. I can't help not to communicate, not to... And now we go to the next step. If we are always communicating and uh, we are one, can we hide anything from anyone? So the more you try to hide, the more you're lying to yourself. <laughs> oh, you cannot lie to any one because everything is because we are all one so if you are all one try to think of that therefore we are one and because we are one we communicate and because we communicate, this communication is perfect. It's perfect. If that is perfect, let's go to another step. If our communication is perfect, and it is perfect because we are one, we are one with God and one with God. So, what is prayer? What is pray? That's communicating with God. A communication with God. Do you need to communicate with God? It's beautiful. Get that. We don't need to... Did not Christ say, don't babble like the Pharisees and the pagans. They make a big noise and a big show. Your heavenly Father knows whatever you want and you need before you can even think about it. Can you see that here? Before you can even think about it, your father knows, so don't give him a headache. <laughs> <laughs> so, our prayer should be, Father, I know, you know, I trust in you, and I thank you for being such a great God. Simple prayer. No, all this noise and this and that. And it makes no sense at all. If we come to this conclusion that the Father and I are one, I don't need to do anything because He knows everything because before I... He knows everything about me even before I was born. Forget about the rest. Everything He knows what my 75 years have gone through, maybe billion years before I was born He knew. So what is prayer? So we, and because we believe in separation, so we pray to a God who's separate from us. 
So he's there, I'm here. You better show me your ears, God. Yeah, I'm going to shout now. I'm going to say, I'm going to say three Hail Marys. I'm going to do this. I'm going on a pilgrimage. I'm going to rub my knees on the ground. You better listen, okay? And so we make a, and God is telling the whole time, what's wrong with you, baby? You're giving me a headache. <laughs> so, what is prayer? Prayer is sitting down in perfect peace and experiencing the presence of the whole universe, which means every human being in your soul, and experiencing the presence of God in your soul, just being there. Just being there. Just being there. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. And that that is now with this this just by just being there, what is happening? The distance that you had between God and all now no, there is no distance. You're just being with Him, who's all, with with God, who's always with with you, and there is no no separation. There is no distance. There is nothing. You and the Father are one, and you begin to appreciate that. And that becomes a highest form of prayer. A highest form of prayer. So you need not you need not do anything to to touch God or to change the world. Change your mind about who you are, and the world will take care of itself. And this whole process is a uh, is called communication. So can we now change the way we communicate and? <laughs> And think we need words to communicate? No. Sometimes we, we meet certain people or we go to certain... And then we, we, tell, we tell each other, I had that feeling. So as we get into this spirituality mode, the feeling that you have will become... You'll become more and more sensitive to that. And you'll be able to read your feelings. You'll be able to say, this feeling is because someone here is sending me a wave of unhappiness. You'll be sitting in a room just there and all of them are, it's a wedding and all of them are having a party and having drinks and everything and laughing and joking but you will at once say that unhappiness is coming from that corner. Be able to sense. Maybe you have already done it. It's coming from there. This, I'm feeling so happy and you, you ask yourself, why am I feeling happy? You say, a little child is there you know, tickling your, your, your thighs. You say, oh, that's why I'm happy. Can we therefore come to that, to, to that great knowledge? We are not what we think we are. We are what we already are. This fellow has gone to sleep. You wake him up. Through this mind, through the body mind, it broadcast only one signal. I am separate. So whole day, this uh, this body mind radio channel www three four five whatever. <laughs> His whole time you put it on and the whole time say, I'm separate, I'm separate, I'm separate, I'm separate, I'm separate. Utterly nauseous. This mind broadcast something else. This this mind is, is like a broken record, broken CD. This mind is fresh. It is peaceful. It is relaxed. And it is always broadcasting the Father and I are one. And it broadcasts that. And what's the meaning of that? Once you say the Father and I are one, and you're broadcasting that to, to your student, now to my student, these three, I'm broadcasting that to you. The Father and I are one. So what's the meaning of that? 
meaning of that is will you join our company will you be one with me and the father and that's the that's the that's the broadcasting from this mind this mind broadcast the father and i are one will you be one with us i'm not going to force you i'm not going to cheat you i'm not going to 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 say you're a bad person but i'm inviting so every time you have that the father and i have one and you broadcast that to the world knowingly unknowingly you're telling them will you join me in this uh, way that i have my life so every time you begin to say that you are separate you begin to think that you are separate and you begin to gossip condemn judge have an opinion about hate change the channel <laughs> change the channel just put them on off this side and say here i am now going to this channel so be be aware the whole one one thing of spirituality is having constant aware of what 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 you are broadcasting to the world because you are creating this world as it is if there is a if there are if there are wars going on in this world if uh, if if they are they are permitting a uh, abortion in the, after the child is born somehow we are part of it somehow we by declaring ourselves separate from each other are saying i don't care so so that then goes into the world that becomes a big ball and somebody writes a legislation so be well don't even condemn those people to ask yourself somewhere along this line because we are all one mind we are all one we are all one so if somebody is doing something good i have a i have a, a finger in it if somebody is doing something bad i have a finger in it we are one and that is why it makes us responsible and also take take the take take the blessings and take the curses for both so that is where that is where we uh, we come again to 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 the formulation of a prayer the prayer is the father and i are one and we are working together and i bring peace to the world let the world do what it likes but i am here to show it love and the more people begin to show love and love and love and love the world will change uh, we have not entered into the revolution of love at all at all uh, another thing i want to tell you don't ever tell yourself you have loved anyone just as i told you don't ever tell yourself you have prayed you have <clears throat> never prayed you have just made noise just don't tell yourself you have prayed because you have only vocalized some prayer you have only sat down in a certain position you have, you have, so the prayer only begins when when you and the father are one and there is no difference there and then there is no prayer at all same thing with love what we know about love is from the mind body i am separate so i must have love from him so we two now become one but we are still separate so can you see that so even our love love is is romantic that is what we know about love girls fall in love or uh, uh, girl fall in love with a boy and they live happily ever after going on going on some on some fast <coughs> trip so that's all. romantic uh, is what we have we have put in love another thing about love is it is affection it is not love affection is not love again so we have a lot of affection because what is what is the problem with affection affection is a ding dong bell one day you have lot of affection for and then you have gone down and then you have more affection and you have less affection more affection so this affection gives you so many thing and then this affection sometimes it is conditional 
very less time which is unconditional. This kind of affection that we have, we want that other person to respond to our affection. I'm showing so much love for her and she's not looking at me. I, how much I, how much, what all things I do for my son and he's a nut. Because he's not responding to your affection. You want him to respond to your affection the way you want him to respond. So that is not love. What is love? The, the most best definition I like about love is Seeking the best for the other, not wanting a payback. If you want a payback, then we have never loved. If you want a payback, you have never loved. You have made a, you have made a business transaction. I'll scratch your back, you scratch my back, but see that you don't bleed me. So that's what we do, and we think that that is love. It is not love at all. It is what, what is, it is called what I call it. Mutual gratification. That's all we do. Even so much, so much. Uh, uh, I've been a priest now 39 years. So much of marriages are begin with mutual gratification. Carry on through mutual gratification, and end in like two bricks on the wall. You remain there. I remain here. I know you. But now what to do? I, I, can't, I can't go anywhere else. I'm tied to you. <laughs> and that's that, that what happens because we did not seek the best for the other. So when I was giving a homily for my niece's uh, wedding, I told them this. I said, uh, if her name is Alisha, if Alisha is not going to seek the best for him, she better walk out from the altar right now. But that is not love. That is not love. And if Paul does not seek the highest good of Alicia, they have to walk out because it will. But once you seek the highest good for the other, with and that's a got a clause. Seeking the best for the other without any expectations of return. Without any expectation of return. So the first question I, I ask when somebody comes for uh, marriage counseling, and I said, okay, you want to marry him? Yeah. What is he bringing to the table? Why are you marrying him? Because he's bringing one, two, three, four, five, a solid smile and all. Yeah. Now what are you taking to the table? So she is getting married to him because of what he is bringing to the table without being aware of what the heck she is taking to the table. That doesn't count at all because he is bringing to the table, he's got a house, he's got a nice car, he's got a good job, he's a, he's a, he's a what is that, he's very, he's, he smiles very much, he's got a good sense of humor. What else do I want? <coughs> Operative word is want. What else do I want? One fine day, of very soon, all these things go off and she's saying, I wanted much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> and that they call it love. They call it love. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it love. So get into this, this thing, uh, seeking the highest. So why are you getting married? Because I see him or I see her. And I think I can work a lot of miracles and see that he becomes the best person that God wants him to be. Happy marriage. I'm going to see that he becomes the best person that God wants him to be. Happy marriage. What if she says, I'm going, I'm marrying him because he's got a good sense of humor. Okay, I tell her, just turn your back, put your butt in front. <laughs> 
He's <laughs> managing his sense of humor. Hey, one fine day he loses his job, his sense of humor is down the drain. <laughs> So keep this, in, this is a very solid uh, spiritual principle, which uh, many people who have studied love and all this thing, they have, this is not mine, okay, from somewhere, or two, three uh, people have said the same thing, seeking the best for the other, is, is, that is love, without expecting anything back. Isn't that great? Now. Why do, should you not expect anything bad, anything back? Simply because the father and I are one. So what do I heck I want from you? <laughs> Can you see if you if you take logically all this thing, the father and I are one. So what the heck do I want from you? Your sense of humor? No, I don't want. But I have the capacity to see that you reach God in record time. And that will be your mission. Your mission is that. That becomes your mission. And so, even in our, uh, uh, in, in our group, so we have an RCI group, we have this spirituality group. So, is there love here? The love that I have for you is that you reach your highest good in the shortest possible time and I have no expectation from you to help with that. So this, what is going on, is real love. Though it doesn't look like a romantic love or something, something, something. What we had of love, you know, exchanging of cards and, you know, so smiling and saying, how are you and let's go for dinner today and blah, 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 all that. But if you can come, uh, give yourself totally, uh, week by week, hour by hour, year by year to, to the group of people and then without expecting anything in return, whether they come or don't come, they are happy or not happy, so it comes automatically. So, that's a... As you keep on operating from this mind or from this mind, the universe that you are that you're sending signals to will also send signals back. It's like going, hitting some wall and coming back. So if you get experiences that are traumatic. You get experiences that, uh, that, not the experience are traumatic, but you see it as traumatic. Experiences that, that stress you out, experiences that are bad, experiences, all that, it is because you have sent that vibration. Uh, I must tell you, in one of my classes I told them, uh, I think two or three, you know, there was a there was a Wednesday when you all didn't come for class. It was a heavy snowfall. Yeah. So I parked my car and I got a ticket. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a hundred and eighty dollar ticket because it was in the disabled parking place. So they said that is very important. We have to teach you a lesson. So I asked God again. Okay, what's the message? First, my ego. When I went to him because he said, can we reduce that and all? You know, I can't pay so much. Why should I pay? I just, I, I couldn't see the line. Not my fault. Ego. Mm -hmm. the, the small mind trying to say, they are all bad. They are all bad. They are all bad. So then I became aware that my, my little mind is teaching me to survive. How should I not pay the bill? Why should I do it? What excuse can I give? How can I manifest? How can I get out of this nonsense that I have put in without, without really wanting to do it? So, I got two answers when I went into that the father and I are one. So first answer I got was, if you have to pay, you have to pay. But I am sending you there for two reasons. 
this was the two reasons you are going to meet a certain group of people whom you have never seen before and you'll never see in your life again make them happy smile at them be cheerful with them and if they have kids talk with them shake hands with them etc i said for that i'm paying 180 bucks <laughs> so, so that was the first thing second thing he says i'm uh, the voice or my inner awareness said now that you're going there said you just tell him or tell the tell the tell the, the officer you don't mind paying because it is your fault and that's it so what is 180 dollars i will see you you get repaid a lot so i went there and there was a line so in front of me were three or four people and behind me was 10 people and uh, so I'm trying to say, now Father, I'm going to smile at everyone. So I looked at them and like a nut I smiled. <laughs> and I smiled and I smiled and I smiled till everybody's spirit was saying, you know, we have a clown with us. <laughs> then there on the bench at the side, if you go to this scrotum court, there's a bench there and there were three children sitting down there. I knew that they must be from the same family, so I went to that bench and I said, Hello, how are you? And I looked into the eye. Okay, you three are brothers and sisters? Yeah. And where's your mom? There. And the mom was become so red. <laughs> the children all pointed out to her. She was a happy camper. And I went inside and I told him that and he says, All charges dismissed. You don't have to pay anything. Out of the blue. Before I could say anything, all my defenses were just you. So can you see, sometimes we have to ask God why He gave us that and begin to understand that, why you gave me that. Uh, two, three years ago I had again, a, uh, I never meet with an accident, but somewhere there was a little minor accident, not big. So again I asked God, what is this accident about? And but and that time I was in a better frame of mind than now, so I went and put the car there uh, to the mechanic shop. I said, okay, so and so we'll phone you up when it is ready. So I came back home. Then it was I I phoned him up. I said, I'm coming today. You gave me the date. Shall I come? Oh yeah, yeah. Your car is ready. So I went there. And I found him making a lot of excuse because the car was not ready. <laughs> and then he's calling somebody else and calling somebody else. So I told him, I said, uh, you think I came for the car? Then why did you come? I said, I came to ask you, how are you? You're doing good. Any problems? Can we just be friends? I want you to be my friend. And it doesn't matter. I will come back again. No big deal. Please. Let us uh, love each other. And I didn't say love each other. Let us be good. I, and I'm happy that I have this chance to meet you. End of story. So now every time I go to that, to that garage, he gives me a reduction of 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I, I followed what uh, the reason for that accident was to make, give him a happy day. He's saying, you made my day happy because everybody comes and grumbles at me. Mm -hmm. uh, you are the first guy who has come and, and smiled at me and not, 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 you know, not kicked my butt. Mm -hmm. Imagine, every, everybody goes, no, and they find it, it's not in time, it's not this, this, this is not that, the window is not closing. Everybody comes, Father, and I, he didn't know I was a priest also. Everybody comes, sir, and does that. You are the first guy who has come and said, it doesn't matter. Okay. So can you see? Therefore, if we follow the mind or follow this mind, if I follow this mind, I, I, I would never go to that garage again and end of story and I would have to pay extra wherever, whenever, when I went for my car. So this mind, the signals are there. Follow those signals. You'll never be in the wrong. You'll never be sorry for that, my dear friends. So all you have to do when you are in this mind, is change the channel. And who can change it for you? Nobody. It's in your hands. So, 
one of the, the, the spiritual foundation that we have is awareness. Be more awareness of which, which of your mind is operating and be very sensitive to that so you can tell yourself this is a little m. The survival mind is, is in operation now. And most of our lives, if, because if you haven't studied spirituality, most of our lives are governed by the little m. Mm -hmm. And then we hit the little m and say, no, you should be good, you know. Yeah, I'll go for confession now. <laughs> Why? Because the little mind was, was bad. The little, you, so you, you hit the little mind instead of being aware and saying, let me go. This is the, the parable of the... Ten virgins who went for the wedding feast. Some had oil in their lamps and some had no oil in their lamps. So when the time came, the ones who had oil, they went and had a ball. The ones who had no oil, they went to buy oil. This is the uh, having oil means operating from the big mind. You and the father are one. You are always well oiled and grace. You can attack, you can... Uh, Use your power for everything. Having uh, having no oil comes from the, this this mind that does not have trust in in the mind that you have. Okay, for today we finish. Thank you. Thank you. See you again Thank you. next week. <laughs>